On this episode of Smart Robots Review, we're going to be assembling the Elegoo Smart Robotic Car based on Arduino. This is the same robotic car kit that we unboxed a few episodes ago, so stay with me. This is part one of assembling the robotic car. This will be fun. Welcome to Smart Robots Review. Hey everyone, welcome back to Smart Robots Review, the show that reviews robotics and other fantastic tech from around the world. I'm your host Elias and it's great to have you here. Today's episode is going to be a departure from what we typically do on the show. We're going to assemble our very own smart robotic car. Arduino based, in fact the same one we unboxed with Elise a few episodes ago. We're going to use this as an opportunity to learn about Arduino boards, we're going to learn about ultrasonic sensors, how to connect all these components to make this smart robotic car, then we're going to program it. We're going to learn how to program all these components and the sky is the limit on the applications that we can apply from everything we learn from this kit. So we're going to start off with assembly. This is part one. Let's get started. Quick tip here before we get started, some of these components we're going to be working with are vulnerable to damage from static electricity. So avoid wearing any uh, static inducing sweaters or fuzzy socks, uh, use a clean table, here I'm using a anti-static mat and some of you may want to wear an anti-static wrist strap. I will include some of those links below for this equipment if you're interested in taking those precautions. Next up you want to make sure you remove all the bags and pieces from the Elegoo box. Lay them out so you can clearly read the label. Every little bag includes some sort of a label to help you through the building process. Alright, quick tip here. Make sure you leave all the circuit boards and screws and all these little components in their bags until you need them. Only take out what you need because in almost every case there are no spare parts. If any of these parts are lost it may impact the completion of your project. For assembly you can use in the included CD or you can go to elegoo.com, E-L-E-G-O-O.com, click on the download link for the latest instructions, assembly instructions, including this neat video that shows a breakout of all the parts. Okay, here we go. Step one. We're going to be attaching the DC motors. Those are the parts that have a yellow color in your parts kit to the lower base acrylic chassis. Okay, we're going to be inserting the screws and attaching the metal plate to each one of these DC motors. So we're going to be repeating this step four times. Each part fits in every hole perfectly. You don't have to force anything. They did a great job make it to make sure everything is easy to assemble. And in the cases where you are going to be needing tools, all the tools that required are included in the kit. Again, very nice. Okay, that is what the final motor should look like. Now we have to repeat this process three more times. All right, one more tip here, make sure to not overly bend or pull on these cables, the red and black cables, to avoid any damage. Okay, now that we have the four motors completed, we have to attach them to the 
acrylic chassis plates that came with the kit. These chassis plates have a film that has to be removed. It's a protective film. I failed to do that and had to go back and remove it later. But let's make sure you remove that paper-like film from the chassis plates before proceeding. Okay, again, the instructions here are perfectly accurate. The screws fit right through the pre-drill holes. You should have no problems at all getting this part done. And here you can see in the back of this plate, I forgot to uh, remove that film, as I mentioned earlier, and I had to go back later in the process and remove it. But you make sure you do it first. Okay, first motor has been attached. Now, later on, we're going to be attaching the wheels to the motors. And we're going to have to repeat this process now three more times for each one of the other motors. Okay, now that we have the motors attached, next up we have to attach the L298N motor driving board. All the motors are going to be ultimately connected to this driving board. And that will enable the wheels to turn when power is fed. So let's attach it. Again, just remember to keep all the circuit boards in their static bags until you're ready to use them. And if you're not sure which is the L298 driving board, there is a photo key index of all these parts in the instructions and also on the box. All right, what I'm pointing at is all the sockets we're gonna be connecting the motors to. There's two on the right and two on the left. One, two, three, four, and each motor is gonna be connected to one of these sockets. Okay, you'll need the bag labeled for Uno L298N module, and then we're gonna follow the instructions as the manual indicates to attach the board to the chassis and then connect the wires. Align the board with the correct orientation as indicated in the instructions. Then you're gonna use a combination of these screws, the white circular spacers, and the included bolts to attach it to the middle of the chassis. Okay, feel free to take your time here. Just do this correctly, don't skip any steps. The nuts and the screws are very small. They could slip and fall. It's happened to me a few times. Try not to lose any of these parts. It's just very important to take your time and do it correctly. Okay, and this is what the board assembled on the chassis will look like some screws and nuts and spacers left. Here I made the mistake of emptying everything onto the static mat. Uh, so remember the advice I gave you earlier, only use what you have to. You're gonna be using the rest of these screws and bolts uh, later on in another step. All right, now it's time to attach all the motors to the L298N module we just attached. Okay, so now plug in each motor to the uh, socket closest to it. Now follow what I'm doing here and also in the instructions. Do not apply too much pressure. These should just click in. So take your time. Make sure you are following the instructions and each time you connect a cable to the socket, it will do a it will give you a slight click as a feedback see like this there we go again take your time it's worth it to get this right all right now that we have 
the cables connected, we're gonna attach and connect the line tracking module. This is the line tracking module. If you notice the blue and black LEDs, those are going to emit infrared light, which the naked eye cannot see, and it's going to help the robot car detect black or white lines. And same process here, we're going to look for the bag labeled for line tracing, and we're gonna just follow the instructions just like before to get this module attached. The screws and bolts are very small, but they do not require, require any additional tools. You can tighten them with your hands. Before you attach the line tracking module to the acrylic chassis, make sure you double check the orientation with the manual. I checked it multiple times just to make sure I placed it correctly. And when you're all done, the line tracking module should look like this. And never mind the protective film here that is still attached to the acrylic board. I should have removed that a while back. So as we discussed, make sure you remove yours in the beginning of the project. And there we go, the line tracking module is attached. Okay, next up we have to use the other acrylic chassis plate, so make sure you remove the film off that. And here it is, the brains of the whole operation, the UNO controller board. This is just like an Arduino UNO R3 board. Let's take a closer look. So this is like a small motherboard, and just like your computer. And the long chip here is actually the CPU, or the microcontroller in this case. AT Mega 328P microcontroller with 32K of flash memory running at 16 megahertz clock speed. And notice that red dot on the top there, that was a reset button. And the port on the left there is a USB port and on the right that is a power port. Okay, next up we have another board. This is an expansion board. It will allow us to connect all the different interesting modules, Bluetooth, infrared, line tracking to this what is called a shield and the shield will be plugged in to the Elegoo R3 Arduino board that we just looked at. And as you can see all the different ports here are labeled Bluetooth, infrared, ultrasonic, really easy to read and kind of guides you as to where you're going to plug in all your cables later on. So, let's get it done. Okay, first check the orientation of the board with the manual, or you can match to what I am doing here. We have to attach the Arduino Elegoo R3 board onto the acrylic chassis. And once that is complete, we're going to have to plug in the shield, this expansion board, on top of the Arduino Elegoo board. Notice all these pins on the shield. Those pins are going to plug into the Elegoo Arduino board. You're going to line them up per the instructions or try and match what I'm doing here. After you line up the pins, ideally you want to apply just 
very light pressure on both sides simultaneously and the pins should just slide right in. And you're done! Perfect! Okay, next up we're going to attach to the acrylic chassis the battery housing. This is where we're going to be placing the rechargeable batteries. So just follow the instructions, line it up, and notice there's a on and off button on the battery housing. That's where we're going to be turning it on and off from. Let's make sure we leave it at off for now. Okay, funny thing happened here, hopefully this is not something that's going to happen with your kit, but chances are that you will encounter the same issue as I did. So you're going to use the correct parts as indicated. Find the right bag of screws. There are holes inside the battery compartment and when you line it up, you will find out that the screws that they provided will go right through those holes. So I think they provided the wrong size screw for this part, but um, we have a fix. 